Dependency injection is the idea of code receiving its dependencies instead of creating its dependencies internally itself. This example from my previous video shows dependency injection. The call side needs to construct the RabbitMQ connector if it wants to use the video upload controller. RabbitMQ connector is a dependency of the video upload controller. Passing in that dependency is called injection. The video upload controller does not create the RabbitMQ connector itself. DI is probably the most important design pattern because it greatly helps us to separate concerns and thus write more loosely coupled code. But there's more to DI than what I've shown in this previous video. And this video is part two, where we look at DI containers to mitigate some of the problems that DI will create for you if you start using it at scale. If you haven't seen the previous video, I highly recommend watching it first because this video builds on what I've shown there. Let's build a minimal DI container together. If you start to use dependency injection throughout your code base, you'll quickly start to run into dependency trees that run multiple levels deep, and that will create problems for you. Imagine you have a few modules or classes that need each other. A depends on B, B depends on C, and C needs D. If you use DI for all of this, then what's actually happening is that A is also coupled to C and D. Just like in the previous example, A needs to know about C before it can construct B. And before it can construct C, it needs to know about D. So A is coupled to all of these other dependencies as well. On a larger scale, it is a bad thing that the call side needs to know that the video upload controller needs a RabbitMQ connector because now you couple the call side to also the RabbitMQ connector. And the general principle is that you don't want A to know about C and D. That's the kind of coupling that you don't want. It is coupling unrelated things together. That is a bad thing. Coupling itself is not a bad thing, but this is creating tight coupling where it doesn't belong. And that makes your code harder to understand and harder to change. A high cost of change is what I call low code quality. And that is the problem that a DI container will solve. Let's look at the same example with realistic components. I have this pattern over here, which is very similar to this pattern over here. That is the link I want you to make. I have an index controller that depends on a database connector. It gets injected a MySQL connector. So the MySQL connector has yet another dependency, the key store, it gets injected, and the key store is a class somewhere else. These represent the four different files. The call side, if it just wants to construct the index controller, it needs to know about the MySQL connector and it needs to know about the key store before it can do so. That is coupling that we do not want. A solution to this problem is to extract the problem of resolving dependencies that's now spread out over the code, that problem, and to put it in its own place. This place is what we call the DI container. It contains all the dependencies and the creation of dependencies. It's basically an object or a module or a class, it doesn't matter, that is responsible for creating dependencies. Let's look at some code to get a feel for what this means. I've changed the example. I've still got the MySQL connector, the index controller, and, and the key store and whatnot. But now they're pulling in dependencies via the container. And I've implemented a very, very, very basic container that really just does nothing except, except for importing the statements. But you can already see that the call site, my entry point file, um, is now requiring a container. And it's then saying basically, construct and run and that's all it needs to do the entry point file does not need to know anymore that the index controller requires a mysql connector because the index controller can ask the container for its mysql connector and the mysql connector can just ask for the key store and it will be supplied by the container again so the index controller does not know about the key store and the call site does not know about the MySQL connector and the key store. That's the advantage here. When you have a single registry to get all your dependencies from, the problem is gone. You don't need to construct entire dependency trees anymore. You can just construct the only one you need and that one will construct the only ones it needs. So you are only depending on the direct dependencies, not the entire tree of indirect dependencies anymore. Now this is a very basic implementation because it only imports right now. In reality, you would not have this container get because you would have, for example, TypeScript, which would say, okay, I want a MySQL connector of type MySQL connector. And what the container does is some kind of magic to inspect the index controller to detect that it needs a MySQL connector and to be able to infer the path 
well, okay, the MySQL connector is located over here and therefore it can include it automatically for you. So you would still have this variable in here in the constructor, which makes it DI. The implementation I've chosen right now is also valid, but it's a lot more basic. DI containers from frameworks are a lot more capable and a lot easier to use in reality. If you take a look at Nest.js, for example, you can import the injectable decorator and you can just make any surface injectable. You're basically saying this surface, this cat's surface is now injectable. It is a dependency. If some other, uh, some other code needs me as a dependency, then I register myself with the DI container so that I can now be injected as a dependency. And as a result, you won't need to import any of these things anymore. You lose a lot of syntax and everything can happen automatically in the background done by the framework. Let's talk about testing next. The first advantage of DI that you'll run into, the most obvious advantage, is that of easier unit testing. You simply have the ability to inject a fake or a mock implementation of something. Let's take a look at this. Uh, this index controller that needs the MySQL connector, it gets it via the container. If I would write a unit test for this, my container could have the capability to basically say, this is a fake MySQL connector, it's not the real one. I want my container to use this fake MySQL connector for the purpose of this test. Then I can construct my index controller, I can call it as if noth nothing ever changed, and I can run my asserts on that. I don't want my unit test to depend on a real database. So this fake MySQL connector is, in this case, not going to actually connect to a, a database, but it's just going to return the same hard-coded array of results from the query method, because that's very advantageous. That's something I can run expects and asserts on. That's very nice. It costs me very little extra code to set this custom implementation, and I get the advantage of not having to litter my real production implementation of the MySQL connector with if statements. If we're in production, do this actual thing. If we're in development or in unit testing, return this hard-coded array thing. That's not code I want in between my production code. That's why it's very nice to have this separated out into two different implementations. They have the same interface, they both have the query method, they both return the same data types, but they do different things. Now, to be able to get this to work, of course I had to update my container. Uh, I now have a get and a set method. The set method stores the implementation you want in a key value store called the I mapping and the get method checks if it has this available then returns that and if it doesn't then it includes the actual file. So the production code would just run into this because there's no override and the test code would run into this scenario because we have called set first in our unit test. Now remember that you don't need a container to be able to mock dependencies in a unit test context. You can just inject the fake connector to the index controller if you don't have a container. This would work just fine. You already get this with plain DI. Let's look at another example. One more interesting use case of dependency injection. Something I run uh, into like almost every project that I have is that I want to use slightly different implementations for local development so that local development becomes a lot easier. For example, uh, when I need to log in a lot into a specific user to, I don't know, maybe I'm developing a UI in React that has a login function and I need to log in with this admin account so that I can test whether the login works and I enter into the admin panel. While logging in, if I need to paste in or type in this password that is long and complex and safe, that will cost me a lot of time. So I would like for local development to have my password as just admin so that I can just use the admin admin account. But I do want this to be secure. So I don't want to have the option of leaking this password to production. With my DI container, this is now very easy to achieve. Imagine me updating my container implementation to have a configure method where you can inject a mapping from the start and then it would just be able to use that. So it would, for more dependencies, just default to the, hey, I already have an implementation available. I don't need to start importing it. If I were to have a JSON file that I would only have for local development, then I could say, instead of the actual key store, use this dev key store that I have, which is it's the same implementation again. It does the same interface, but it just has one hard-coded password for a specific admin account. What this gives me is that this implementation is in a different file. It is not production code. When I start to do a build and deploy, I could even say anything that has .dev, .js in it, I don't want to have that in my Docker container so that I have the safety of only releasing production ready code to production and not accidentally dev code. It's in a completely different implementation now. When bootstrapping your DI container, you just need to 
include this mapping file, this JSON file, and then configure the DI container. And that's really all it requires. Those are very little changes because we already have a centralized place responsible for containing all the dependencies. And the result is that you now have an obvious list of things that you do different in development mode. I won't have scary if statements in my production code. Imagine having in this key store, if condition, then password equals admin in your production code. I wouldn't feel good about that. And with DI, you won't have to. And that's it. I hope this was helpful. I hope you liked it. I'd like to hear from you. Did I pick the right examples to explain the concepts? Was this easy to understand? Please leave a comment and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.